Well, let's think about this. So now we have some other edges that are causing problems. We have this edge, oh, hold on, there we go. We have this edge specifically. Now again, imagine this as a paper model. If you were to flatten this out, that edge, as this polygon starts to swing outwards, this edge would want to tear. There's still tension on this edge. The same is going to be true of all these other diagonal edges. So if I mark those as seams, and then I unwrap again, now we're getting somewhere. Once again, let me move this out so we can get a better look at it. All right, this is getting close, but we still have one more edge worth of tension to deal with. So again, this is a corner, so imagine the paper model. If we were to flatten this out, if we were to flat, flatten this shape, this cuboid, perfectly flat, one of these edges would need to tear if it was the paper model. And it can be any of them. So I'll just choose one that the player probably won't be seeing a whole lot. Maybe this one. I'll mark that as a seam. And once again, unwrap it. And there we go. Now the unwrap of this particular part is complete. That is perfectly flat. Textures will transfer to that very nicely. So we just need to do this to all of the corners. And then I'm going to talk about how to unwrap the actual frames in between the corners next. But first, I'm going to unwrap the, the other corner boxes. Now to actually unwrap them, you see how all these are marked in red? That means that they're pinned. So if I select everything and hit Alt-P, that'll unpin everything so they can all be unwrapped. And when it unwraps, it'll automatically scale everything so that they're all appropriately scaled and they all fit inside of this one by one grid here. Also, really quick, now you may have noticed that every single edge going around this strip of polygons was selected and cut. So a really quick way to select those is by selecting what's known as an edge ring. So this, for example, is an edge loop. It is a continuous edge that goes all the way around. This see where all the parallel edges are selected? That's known as an edge ring. To select an edge ring, you hold Control, Alt, and then right click on an edge and it'll select the edge ring. All right, let's do that for all of these. So as you see now, our corners are very cleanly unwrapped. So let's talk about the frames next. So what I see here are basically cylinders. So I'm going to want to cut off each individual cylinder, and then I can unwrap them separately. So that basically means splitting them off from each other, which would be around these inside corners. Aha! I see what happened. So what's going on now, as you see, something went very wrong. So what's happening right now is that it's trying to unwrap a cylinder where one of the sides has not been cut. So let me give myself a little bit more space here. So if we were to look at this section, for example, if we wanted to unwrap that, if you can imagine again, a tube, if you wanted to flatten that out, you would need to slice it lengthwise down one end. So that's what we're going to do. And the edge we're going to pick is this one that's on the inside, because that's going to be covered up by all of our other geometry. So if there is a texture seam there, the player will not be able to see it. So again, just mark seam, and we'll do that for all the others. 
We don't need to do that down here because these are not full tubes. They are missing one half of themselves. So those already will unwrap properly. Now when we unwrap it, you'll see everything looks very nice. It still isn't quite perfect though. We still need to actually align these because this is going to be a bit difficult to texture on. Now you know what, I'll worry about that right now. So when we're texturing these, here's what we need to keep in mind. We need to keep in mind how we're going to be texturing them. Now I'm going to be doing some of the texturing for these in Photoshop. So being able to paint vertical lines and have those travel evenly down the length of one of these frames will make texturing much easier. But right now, our UVs do not allow for that. As you see, they get wider at the top and at the bottom because the ends of our frames are flared. So what we can do is we can start to align them. But we don't want to align them immediately. And by that I mean align these edge loops vertically. We need to align these with each other. To conserve UV space, I'm going to be overlapping some of these UVs. 